Michelle Miller from CBS Saturday Morning and welcome to The Dish. Dough and cheese and toppings are the key ingredients in today's episode. We're talking all about the wonderful world of pizza. We head to San Francisco where the unmistakable clamor of a busy restaurant sounds a little different than you might expect. And to Las Vegas for an inside look at the industry of pizza. But first, we head to one of the most critically acclaimed pizza joints in the country, and it's right here in New York City, where Nate Burleson got the privilege of eating what some say is the perfect pie. You have said that your relationship with pizza is like an addiction to a drug. Please explain that to me, because to be honest, I identify with that. That's how much I love football. I think the addiction to the pizza is the idea also that like I can never really reach the finish line with it. I feel like the more I put into it, the more time I put into it, the, the further away I actually get from the idea of mastering it. Anthony Mangieri talks about pizza, the way someone could describe the delicate subtleties of falling in love. And to really understand where love like that comes from, you need to understand its origin. Long ago, there wasn't really anyone in America making the pizza that was from Naples. And you know, my family is from that part of the world. And I used to drive my grandmother crazy and she was more of the kind of woman like a lot of old school people where they were just like, I don't want to talk about anything, leave me alone. And I was like, but I want to know this and I want to know that. And then as I got older and started to go to Italy, like it just, it connected with me so much. It tasted so different than like anything I had eaten. You know, my original goal was to like bring this like ethnic, almost exotic food to America. Una pizza napoletana on New York's Lower East Side is what you get after decades of refining the simple. The menu, it's uncomplicated. Only pizza here, five different pies. And the ingredients, Mangieri keeps that simple too. Now, can you explain to me how creating something so simple can be so difficult? You know, when things are really simple, I think that's when it actually can get complicated because mm. there's nothing to hide behind. You know, it's almost like if you're, you know, in a rock band and you're gonna do your solo concert and it's gonna be like you singing acoustic with nobody else, there's nowhere to hide. It's similar with making pizza, and especially the way we do it at Una, which is like pretty straightforward, pretty lightly topped, and really trying to let the very few ingredients that we use sing, you can get lost in that. Mangieri discovered his pizza obsession while in his teens. He opened a bakery in New Jersey when he was 22, and established the first Una at the Jersey Shore in the 90s. He later moved that shop to Manhattan, and then to San Francisco, before settling back home here in New York City. Our dough is the same way we've made it since the beginning. It's naturally leavened, so there's no yeast in it. What that means on some health sides is that it's easier to digest. Mm -hmm. We change the dough mixture every day. I don't think we've ever made it really? exactly the same. No, and I don't write anything down either. So some days we come in and we're like, oh my God, it's great. And some days we come in and like even today, I was like, dear God, I hope it worked last night. <laughs> Splashed across the pages of high-profile restaurant reviews, Mangieri's work has been widely recognized. Thank you, Anthony. Here he is in the Showtime hit Billions. It's good to love what you do. Enjoy, guys. And food critics of every flavor have sampled and reviewed his Neapolitan-style pizza. Pete Wells of the New York Times said this about your pizza. Unmistakably, the finest sit-down pizza in the five boroughs. Does stuff like that go to your head? No, no, I mean, man, I feel so grateful like to even be able to make pizza and do it for a living. Actually, I think when he called me to fact check for that article, I was, I pretty sure I said, <laughs> you don't have to write about us, <laughs> you know? It has to drive you though, and I, I know you drive yourself. Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, I'm pretty self-driven and self-motivated. For more than a quarter century, he's made nearly every bit of dough and every Una pizza himself. This oven reaches temperatures around 1,000 degrees, 
It only takes about 90 seconds for a finished pizza to emerge. So you take one scoop like it's that, one little ladle. send it in the center, and kind of spin it around. Oh my God. That spoon. And trust me, it's harder than it looks. And you make pizza until you're out of. We make, yeah, we open at five, we make pizza till we're out of dough. Um, along with our pizzas, which we have five very basic ones, there's four toppings that you can add to those. We those offer, toppings are? Those toppings are Parmigiano Reggiano, Calabrian Long Hot Peppers, which are amazing, pepperoni, but it's not your average pepperoni, it's incredible, and anchovies from the Amalfi Coast. For Mangieri, quality product starts with being open and being humble. It's baked into his personality and baked into his pizza. I don't think anything can stop you. It's like cause and effect. Yeah. It's the rules of the universe, you right. know? But like you would know, man, playing yeah. sports, it's like, you know, you're not gonna be an NFL superstar in five minutes. Like it's a <laughs> lifetime of like effort and struggle. So the mozzarella, and it's the same with a small business. Whatever it is, if you give it, people are gonna come in, they're gonna see it. Yeah, much respect to y'all. It's just tricky. They're gonna get it. They're gonna understand that like this is for real. This is the truth. We put it on here? Yeah. And that like you are giving it your all. And I think it's undeniable. And I think you will find your success. Man, I can sit there all day long and eat these pizzas, Thanks, man. man. Thank you. Up next, our Jeff Glor visits an unlikely restaurant that ranks among the world's most respected pizza places. Literally. When it comes to ranking the world's best pizza, you might not expect a little spot in Western New York to make the list. But against all odds, it did. And Jeff Glora went there for a taste. Joe Powers is a pizza prodigy. He studied first under restaurateur Jay Langfelder before rounding out his training in Naples. Joe was always asking questions. He wanted to know what you were doing. You know, it wasn't just make the pizza. He wanted to know why. He wanted to know why we did things a certain way. And that made you believe that he could do this by himself. I, I he already was. It was it was fun and like it's it's been a really good experience like learning how to like I guess be myself, you know. Joe and Jay's rapid rise to global pizza superstardom gave us a chance to do an Americanized dish dive into the world of traditional Neapolitan style. For the uninitiated, the difference between Neapolitan pizza and the pizza you normally would have delivered to your house. So a Neapolitan pizza is cooked extremely hot and extremely fast. So it's gonna be much softer and kind of a puffy cornichon and it's gonna be a lot fresher of a pizza than something you get in a box that was baked for eight or 10 minutes. So ideally these are eaten within minutes of coming out of the oven. Pizza meant to be eaten hastily is best prepared exactingly. So I'm just gonna dump that in there. We're just gonna put uh, 10 grams of yeast in. Yep. And you're gonna kinda like rub it in between your hands. So we're just gonna go like that and it's just gonna fall right into the water. So then we're going to weigh out all of the flour. This is a uh, Caputo double zero flour. What's double zero? Double zero is just like the type of flour that it is. If you're going by like Neapolitan pizza, like traditions, double zero flour. Start it. We'll come back in seven minutes and see what it looks like. Okay. Once the mixture was complete, Joe formed the dough into 12 perfectly smooth round balls before introducing us to another time-honored tradition. This is the Neapolitan slap. Yes, yeah, all the pizza I owe in Naples. Stretch pizza like that. So that looks about good. Then we're gonna bring it right there. About a 12 inch disc. Next, my turn. So now you're gonna get your, your hand like this, yeah. three fingers underneath, and yeah. you're like throwing it, and then you're also rotating it. Throw and rotate. Yep. Throw. So throw it over, yeah, rotate it, yep. Hey, if it was easy, everybody would do it, right? That's close. Whoops. Yeah. Now it was time to give our pie a little taste of the old country. 
So we're gonna do one scoop of the tomatoes that we get from um, Italy. Then we're gonna go with a little Parmigiano Reggiano. Gives it a little bit of saltiness, a little bit of bite. This is some basil that we get from somebody locally who, who grows it uh, hydroponically. It's, it's really, really great basil. And then we have a little bit of uh, fresh mozzarella. I'm just gonna spread, a, oh, yeah. spread it out like that. Do you want me to put it on the peel and you launch it in the oven? No, I'm doing the whole thing. Doing the whole thing? Yeah, all right. You're gonna, slide, you're gonna go one quick motion, slide right underneath. You're gonna lower, lower your backhand, keep this flush to the table, and you're gonna go straight through it. I, yeah, like, like Damn I, it! Like I said, you, now you do it the right way. If at first you don't succeed, ask a pro. Oh, you did it perfectly. Yeah. Okay. All that was left was to launch it into the oven. Find your spot, put it on it, and then one quick motion out. Yep, angle it down and pull it. There you go. Like a samurai. Yeah. And only about 60 seconds later, our Neapolitan pizza was ready to eat. The classic margarita was served along with an andouille pizza with chili honey and basil, fungi with confit garlic and truffle pecorino, the zucca with butternut squash puree, maple syrup, and pumpkin seeds and a pesto Neapolitan with roasted tomatoes. Joe also threw in a Detroit style with cherry peppers. For dessert, panna cotta. What is it about Neapolitan pizza that you thought would work so well? You know, I had worked in Buffalo pizzerias for forever, and I love Buffalo style pizza as much as the next guy, but I just felt like this area was missing all these other varieties of pizza that you can find across the world and in the U.S. I mean, it seems crazy to say, but is the goal, is the goal eventually to have the number one pizza? It's a goal, but it, I, I don't know. It's not the number one goal. Well, like it is, and it isn't. <laughs> well, when Joe, Joe called me to tell uh, tell me that they were 13 in the U.S., oh, yeah. though, the, I think the first thing that came to both of our minds is, how do we get in the top five? Yeah. Top five, yeah. <laughs> There is something special about this next story. The food, of course, but also the staff, entirely owned and operated by people who are deaf. Tracy Smith experienced the magic of Mazzaria in San Francisco. This is Mazzaria, ranked among the top pizza places in the city and one of the first to be entirely owned and operated by people who are deaf. Thank you. Aww. Melody and Russell Stein opened the place in 2011, and it's been a foodie favorite from the start. Their 900-degree wood-fired oven is the best they could find, and so is every ingredient. Where does the cheese come from? We bring that from Italy. Oh, my goodness. And we also make some in-house. And if that doesn't make you hungry, I don't know what will. Noise isn't an issue here, and neither is communication. Oh, yeah. Where is it? This one. Pointing at the menu works just fine. And you can even phone in a takeout order. That glowing green light on the wall signals an incoming call. An operator picks it up and translates your order in sign language via closed circuit TV. But this is about a lot more than serving hungry customers. How important is it to you to have an all deaf staff? Oh, it's very important. If a hearing person, say, it doesn't work out here, they can find a job tomorrow. No problem, while all the deaf people here have to look for years and still can't find a job. That's when I decided I would have an entirely deaf team, even if they have no work experience. The critics, like food editor Paolo Lucchesi, have been kind. You can feel the love in the, in the food. And, that's, and it's just simple, delicious food, that the kind of food you just want on a, on a Wednesday night. What does that do to your heart? It's still hard to believe, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Since this story first aired, the original Mazzaria has now become a food truck and opened a new location in Washington, D.C. After the break, we head to Sin City for the big business of pizza profits. This is the dish. 
The annual International Pizza Expo in Las Vegas brings together thousands of pizza makers and would-be business owners and begs the question, can everyone get a slice of the pie? Luke Burbank weighs in. For one week every year, the center of the known pizza universe isn't Naples, Italy, or New York, or even Chicago. It's Las Vegas when the International Pizza Expo rolls into town, bringing with it thousands of professional pizza makers, dough tossers, All right. one TV reporter nervous about his waistline. Let's do a little before weigh-in. And lots of aspiring pizza iolos, which is Italian for people hoping to grab their slice of the pizza business. Well, I've always loved baking, and my four boys and I, we would every Friday make, you know, make pizza. It was our pizza Fridays. People like Sherry Neal. Her dream of opening a pizzeria started back when she was living in a small Oregon town, working as a baker. And I would get requests for pizza because we just didn't have a great pizza place. Neil came to Vegas to join the ranks of the 42,000 or so people in the U.S. that own independent pizza parlors. And she's learning it won't be easy. There are just so many pitfalls in opening a place that it's amazing any place succeeds. In fact, according to recent studies, more than half of restaurants that open fail in the first few years. But Scott Sandler's shop, Pizza Head, in St. Louis, is one of the success stories. And he's come to the expo to extol the virtues of, of all things, vegan pizza. Vegan and vegetarian is just growing like crazy. Sandler, who used to work on Wall Street, managing a very different kind of dough, was also teaching a class on what he calls restaurant math. A lot of people get into pizza and they're romantic about it, but they don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know margins. Anthony Falco knows margins and industry trends and really just about every aspect of the pizza business. And it's knowledge he'll share with you for a price. Because, you see, he's an international pizza consultant, which, yes, is really a job. Most of the people say, like, that's awesome. I wish I had known that was a job and I could do it. And I'm like, oh, it's really easy. Just spend 10 years working 80 hours a week building one of the most recognized pizza brands in, you know, the United States. Falco got his start at influential pizzeria Roberta's in Brooklyn, New York, and has now helped open restaurants on four continents, part of the global pizza industry, which is worth an estimated $144 billion, which is a lot considering it's often sold at just a few dollars a slice. You can go pretty far on sauce and cheese. Like, the combination of hot cheese and sauce is pretty epic. And you throw pepperoni on there. When they say bad pizza is still pretty good, that's what they're talking about, is the cheese-sauce combination. The cooking of the delicious pizza is, like, the easiest, funnest part. Consistency, uh, operations, like running a well-tuned machine is, you know, the, really the hard part. But the key, Falco says, to really, really good pizza is its base, the crust. Is this the perfect food? Yeah, this right here, this one, this pizza, this exact pizza is the perfect food. You know what I mean? Just kind of like, okay, yeah, I'm man, You got veggies, you got herbs, and well, look, there you go, no tip sag. No tip sag. Yeah, cheers. Aspiring pizza shop owner Sherry Neal has been thinking about her crust for years, literally. We're going to do a sourdough, and my starter, which is called a mother, is about 14 years old, so it makes an excellent crust. Oh, wait a second. You, the dough that you're going to use for your restaurant, you've had the beginnings of that dough for 14 years. Yeah, it's like my fifth child. You have to feed it. I, when I, Whenever we move, we moved cross country and it was in the car with me the whole time. I fed it every day. Oh, Korean barbecue chicken. Speaking of well-fed, I'd been feeding myself pizza for three solid days. And finally, it was time for a reckoning. And after three days of pretty much continuous pizza eating, Oh boy. The result was a pleasant surprise, actually. Just a couple of extra pounds. Who knows? Maybe it is true what they say, that what happens in Vegas really does stay there. 
one can only hope. For more stories like these and live coverage of breaking news 24-7, stream us right here on CBS News. I'm Michelle Miller. We'll see you the next time for another helping of The Dish. This episode of The Dish is sponsored by Prudential. Plan, invest, insure. Retire with Prudential.